And just for the heck of it, Alex, why don't you go ahead and start? How am I supposed to start it, Drac? What are you expecting me? I'm not a trained monkey who can outgo everything on your command. You gotta start respecting me, man. I'm just an individual. I'm not a machine. Wow, this is actually kind of totally unrelated to what we're about to talk about. I know. I almost expected, like, poo sticks or something. <laughs> Happy you, Wednesday? You put me on the spot, dude. I did. Maybe you need to go and uh, take a walk around the honey tree so that you can figure out how to introduce things. Well, what's the point? <laughs> it all just means nothing in the end. Are you just worried that uh, a heffalump is going to come out of nowhere and take away what, whatever thought you had? It's inevitable. They all come for you sometime. <laughs> do, do the heffalump scream now. I can't do that. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome, everybody, to another uh, Dracon Shadow vlog. Uh, this time around, we're taking on... Uh, this, this, is an, this is another one where I think we, we, we definitely need to come up with something for trailer bait because <laughs> this like when we were planning out movies, this was not on the list. I don't think we expressed interest. Well, we saw it, but we were just like, oh, OK, well, let's see. Let's wait until we see a trailer to see what they're going to do with it, because it was called Christopher Robin. So at that point, we we're like, OK, is this going to go animated? Is this going to go CG? Because it's Winnie the Pooh. Like when you think Christopher Robin, you think Winnie the Pooh. Uh, so at that point. Then we saw the trailer, and that, I think, hooked us both at the same time, didn't it? Probably, yeah. Yeah, So, because at that point, it looked like a walking trip through nostalgia. But yeah, as, as we've kind of spoiled here, we're going to be talking today about Christopher Robin. And again, if you have not been uh, privy to the 2018 Shadow, Direct and Shadow vlogs we've been doing, we're spoiling the heck out of this movie. We're going to be talking about it uh, the only way we know how, which is to spoil the ever-loving crap out of it. So if you don't want to be spoiled, uh, especially if you don't want your childhood spoiled, well, pause the video, and I promise we'll wait for you because you paused it, and therefore you held us in time. And therefore, Alex, we are timeless. Like Winnie the Pooh. Whoops. So at that point, uh, let's go ahead and get into it. Um, what... What were we actually expecting walking into Christopher Robin? Were we expecting more of an animated movie? Were we expecting something a little bit more Pooh-centric? What What was your thoughts walking into it? I knew it was going to be live action. Um, even though I didn't dig too deep, I think my first thoughts, maybe this was going to be more of a, the story of Winnie the Pooh, like of A.A. A. 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 Milin, or however you say her name. Or actually, his name. Sorry, because uh, it's a man who wrote Winnie the Pooh. I thought mm -hmm. maybe this was gonna be more like uh, more of the story of how Winnie the Pooh came about. Because the last time we had a Winnie the Pooh movie, it tanked hard. It... Yeah, which one was it? It was either the Tigger, Tigger movie or it was the the Piglet movie. I don't remember. That got that tanked. I just it was a. I just remember it was a two D animation and Disney stupidly released it the same weekend as a Harry Potter movie. So, it was Tigger. It was Tigger. It was Tigger. Because okay. I think Piglet was, uh, it, it released alongside something too, but it still did fairly well. Right. Okay. Yeah. So I like, I never thought Disney would want to go back to Winnie the Pooh, but then I saw it was live action. I think I kind of heard like, oh, it's kind of like Hook basically. Um, it's so I figured, okay, so this is going to be a similar idea. It's a rekindling your lost childhood. Yeah. And that's what it is, and that's fine. I liked it. Well, it's 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 sense. rekindling things, but it's also, unfortunately, it's kind of going down that angle that um, movies like Pete's Dragon recently did, where they're, they're also try kind of trying to rewrite things a little bit to either cater to more modern aud audiences or... Uh, you know, just just tell the narrative that they want to tell uh, my thoughts walking into it. When I saw the Christopher Robin on the list, um, I was like, I was really hoping it was just going to be an animated movie. Why? Because <clears throat> when you think Winnie the Pooh, you think, you know, this is something I can bring my kids to. Um, this is something because we, we all grew up with Winnie the Pooh at mm -hmm. one point. We know Winnie the Pooh. We, you know, we were either a fan of Pooh, Eeyore, Rabbit. Take, well, I don't think a whole lot of people were fans of Rabbit, unfortunately, but. <laughs> like Tigger and Kanga and Rue, and we, we wanted all of that. Although I will argue that they missed one in this because yeah. one of my favorite characters, the gopher, was not in it. <laughs> yeah, I was like, where's the gopher? Well, technically, if you remember, in the, st in the story, he's actually from another book. 
So I, see. I like the fact that they kind of stuck with that, but it would have been funny for him to make an appearance. So yeah, then we saw the trailer for it. And to me, it, it already looked like something that was more built towards adults than it was to kids. And the only reason I say that is because it follows an adult Christopher Robin going back to the hundred acre wood and, you know, the fact that, you know, he now lives this boring life and, and can go back into the Hundred Acre Wood. And to me, that speaks more towards the nostalgic parent, the nostalgic adult than it does to kids, even though, it, you know, kids aren't hard to speak to. OK, let's let's just be honest about that. Kids are not that hard to speak to. So, I mean, at that point, I, I didn't know what to expect, but I did want to at least see it. So with that being said, now that we have actually seen it, uh, well, o- overall thoughts on it. It's a really charming, charming movie. I know you'd say it looks like it appeals more to adults, and I think it kind of does, but I still think it's a very fine family film that you could take your kids to, that you could have your kids watch with you and enjoy. It is there to uh, kind of recapture the old audience of Winnie the Pooh from mm. those who grew up with the original books or the original Disney cartoons from way back when, but it's also the Disney some- afternoon cartoon, which was the best. Was it afternoon? Yeah, it, it it was it was part of the Disney afternoon for a while. Oh, wow. Okay. <laughs> I just remember it all. It didn't be- start there, no, no, but it eventually made its way there. I just remember it being on really early in the morning. <laughs> yeah, it it was a big feature on ABC Saturday morning and then um when it finally hit the Disney Channel, they they ran freaking marathons of it. Right. Uh just because like in those early hours of the day, it is such a good show for kids of pretty much most ages to be able to to enjoy so the many adventures of winnie the pooh got a lot of screen time uh which is one of the things that has never made sense to me we have box sets for gummy bears we have box (laughs) sets for chippendales rescue rangers and i'm not saying they don't deserve them but no box set for the many adventures of winnie the pooh seriously Uh, i know disney what the frick is wrong with you the problem with these old shows there's always some stupid like rights hold up that causes this crap to go on I think the only reason I've I've actually done my homework on this. And the only reason I've ever seen is that Disney doesn't think it would do well. And at that point, I'm like, Disney, you have your head up your butt. This would be amazing. And and parents like me and adults, they, they, they'd they all clamber out to buy the many adventures of Winnie the Pooh. They go out and get like, I, I literally know people who have the VHS copy of the original Winnie the Pooh movie. Mm -hmm. They went out and got the DVD release of it. They went out and got both HD DVD and Blu-ray re-releases of it. And they just barely got a 4K re-release of the many adventures of the adventures of Winnie the Pooh, the classic movie, right? Not the TV series, the classic movie. And you know, this is also the kind of people who would have the Tigger movie, the piglet movie, all that stuff. So why not get that TV series, which all of them, I like uh, a lot of the ones I know of, I've brought up that TV series. Like, oh my gosh, I had to watch that when I got home from school. Like, screw everything else. Screw Darkwing Duck. Screw X-Men. Screw all of that stuff. I had to watch The Many Adventures of Winnie the Pooh. Well, that's pretty sweet. What the heck, man? Like, that that is a, a prime piece of nostalgia. But anyway, so back to kind of what we were talking about. So overall, you liked it. Yeah. Um. I will say that now that I've seen it, it does, to me, it caters to nostalgia as well as adventuring youth. So at that point, it is a family picture. I would actually say it's more of a family picture than the recent Pete's Dragon that came out. Um, And so in that case, I I do appreciate it all the more. But I I am going to stick to my guns here. I think the message is more towards adults than I think it is towards kids. Kids just love the fact that Pooh... You know, you, Pooh is going to be Pooh. Eeyore is going to be Eeyore. And that's what you got, you know, and you also got to put Pooh in a modern setting. OK, that's funny. That's well, not exactly but, a modern setting. No, let's, no. Let's be clear. This is a, a more piece. modern setting than where he was. Like, you know, when you think Pooh, you think a very simplistic setting and right. this put him in a city. Yeah. The word you're thinking of, the word you're looking for is urban yeah, environment, it, it, which even yes. then, that's pretty that's not really the whole movie. There's just as much time in the hundred acre wood as yeah. there is in London. But I'm saying that you got that change of pace. You, you got that change of pace for not every one of them. Obviously I don't, I don't think rabbit or owl or kangaroo would have worked, but the fact that they brought Pooh, piglet, Eeyore and Tigger into, Lo- into London uh, was, was perfect. That's, that's who you needed to bring to London. 
So I, I will say I like it, but it, it does cater to what I thought it did. It, it's more of an like a lot of a lot more of the subtle messages and, and uh, moral of the story here are catered towards adults. Yeah. And kids, they basically just got to have more fun with Winnie the Pooh kind of thing. Uh, so what? So let's go into likes and dislikes. What did, what did you like about Christopher Robin? You and McGregor is great. I think he's really great in pretty much anything he's done. I've never seen anything in that I've, I've never seen liked like that one. Him. I was we were actually talking about this before the movie. I can only think of one thing where I didn't like his performance all that much, and that was the island. Yeah, I've never seen the island. Um. Well, and the problem with the island was that the, in my opinion, the main heroes kind of got, kind of got shellacked as far as development is concerned. There, I actually think that there are side characters in that movie that got more development than the main heroes. And so that's that's your problem, as far as I'm concerned. Mm -hmm. It's not you, and I I think in all honesty it was directing, the uh, directing and writing that kind of killed that movie. Although you know, I I still have friends who love it, but I mean I I actually got um. I got promptly screamed at by a few people because how dare I like you and McGregor in Beauty and the Beast? I thought his rendition of Lumiere was was awesome. I mean, I love Jerry Orbach. I love Jerry Orbach, but I also liked what you and McGregor brought to the table. Yeah. So, I, I mean, at that point, yeah, I, I actually agree with you. You and McGregor's performance is what sells this movie a lot of the time because a lot of the mood are centered around Christopher Robin, you know, when he's feeling lost and he's feeling unhappy. One of the things I, I, I kind of liked, and, and I'll just throw this in here just to see what you think of it. Um, was it just me or did the hundred acre wood tend to change and shape around Christopher Robin's mood? I think so. Cause when he first get, cause when he first kind of comes back as the adult, it's kind of gloomy and starts raining for a bit. And yeah. Then once he kind of wakes up after kind of being knocked out for a while, it's all sunny and bright again. And that's how the movie opens is the nice sunny, bright hundred acre wood. Yeah. Well, it, the, the funny thing is, is it, it begins and it ends on the sunny and bright hundred acre wood. Yeah. And then when you get, when he comes back after all the horrible things that have happened in his life, it's gloomy, it's dingy, it's, it's sad. And, and one of the things I like about it is after that whole night in the heffalump trap, uh, which was what that was supposed to be. It was a heffalump trap. Well, that kind of blew up in your face now, didn't it, Christopher? The, the hundred acre wood starts to brighten after that. Like as soon as he starts wandering around and then he finds all of the other friends and then he goes back to London and everything's brighter and it gets brighter throughout. Uh, but I did like the fact that at the beginning when he's a kid, it's it's brightest like it's it's a sunny day and and Christopher Robin only comes on sunny days. And then at the end of it, they literally get to end on like a, an even brighter sunny day. Yeah. For Christopher Robin to come out and enjoy things with Winnie the Pooh because he's there with his family. Yeah. Um, and, and just to kind of bring people up to speed in case you already seen this and we and we we don't we haven't necessarily explained it all this well, all that well. The, the reason that we have is that. Christopher Robin couldn't go to the hundred acre wood after a while because he got sent to a boarding school and then his father died. I believe it was supposed to be in world war one. Then he went to world war two. He got drafted to world war two, uh, saw the horrors of war and then eventually came home to kind of just like he, he got married, but he had a dreary job and nothing was really ever good for him until Pooh comes back into the picture. Yeah. And things start to kind of reshape, but if Pooh had not come back into the picture, like things would have gotten even more dreary for him. And I actually think like things would have gone even worse. Uh, they kind of paint that his wife was about to leave him. Um, and his daughter had already given up on him. So it, it was, it was not going in a, in a right place for, for our friend Christopher Robin, but you uh, bringing things back as a whole, Ewan delivers in all aspects of life that he's available for. And I actually like a lot of the interactions with the stuffed animals because un unfortunately like Pooh, he's just not that expressive. His CG is not that expressive. A lot of that has to be sold by you and McGregor. Yeah. And he does it well. So uh, other things that you like for it. Uh, it was the other casting was really good. I mean, you have Jim Cummings back as Pooh and Tigger yep. and you know, just as great as always. And I liked Brad Garrett as Eeyore. 
Yeah, that was pretty good. In fact, my favorite moment was when they tried to get uh, Eeyore to do heffalump noises. <laughs> and I was like, oh my gosh, this is awesome. Because every time he did it, like everybody else got all neurotic. Because <laughs> This is a moment where all of them are hidden in a log because they're afraid of the heffalumps. And then uh, Christopher Robin tells Eeyore to make heffalump sounds. And every time he does that, like all of them start moving in the log. It's like, oh my gosh, what was that? What was that? What was that? And it, it got really awesome after a while. Yeah. So so that's the, the voice cast. What did you think about the rest of the human cast? Yeah, the wife is really good. She's, uh, his wife Evelyn is really good. The little girl is really good too. So the whole cast really just definitely is there to help support it, kind of mm-hmm. help sell it. Between I, the... I especially liked Haley Atwell as, um, as his wife, or I'm sorry, as Evelyn, my wife. Yeah, um, because that, that's how she got called every every time she got called in uh and and yes that is the Haley at well, the agent carter Haley atwell so you know from the tv series from the captain america movies from the first ant-man same woman and she she pulls it off i i really liked what they tried to do with it and and i'll also give props to um the girl who played madeline i, I i'll probably murder her the name i think it's bronte carmichael is her name and I think she did fairly well considering she was supposed to be like, you know, second generation Christopher Robin. She was supposed to be the person who hangs out with all the stuffed animals. And uh, yeah, I, I think it overall, it all worked out. Yeah. So, so really solid casting there. Yeah. Especially when you consider a lot of the, the poo cast. Um, for those who don't know, the voice of Rabbit passed away. Yeah, I figure so they, quite they, a few of them are gone. Yeah, so so the voice of Rabbit passed away. I think Jim Cummings has a f- is either on his way to retirement or has officially retired. So the fact that he came, that he came back for this was awesome. Brad Garrett as Eeyore was awesome. Um, I think it's the original Tigger, too, isn't it? Yeah, he's... Yeah, I'm pretty sure he's the original Tigger. Yeah. So, yeah, I, I agree with you. The cast was pretty spot on. What what uh, other things did you like about it? Uh, I liked... Uh, I just think it's a very nice atmospheric movie. You okay. know, it's it, for a family movie. It doesn't get, too, doesn't get too bogged down in trying to be all bombastic on you. It's just a nice kind of... It's a quiet movie, but it's still a silly movie that will entertain your kids, so they're not going to, like, be bored. Because, you know, you get to watch Pooh's antics. Uh, yeah. You know, he uh, unfortunately, like, breaks shells and causes he lots of damage to poor Christopher Robin's house. <laughs> Just curious, like, how do you think that Christopher Robin was going to explain that when he got Pooh home and, and they came home and was like, what the hell happened? <laughs> oh, it must have been a burglar. <laughs> must have been it's a good question <laughs> we'll check our belongings <laughs> <You know? laughs> yeah i think that's probably what he was thinking but uh who knows like the other thing too is i like how ewan kind of portrayed how christopher robin to a lot of people would have been as an adult which is honest so he actually tries to explain poo to her to his wife a few times and well she has the natural reaction <laughs> Yes, you've gone absolutely mental and and we should really get you to a doctor and all that. And actually, that was one of the moments I think was really well done for the kids, having all of them hit the windshield. Yeah. I was like, Tigger, Eeyore, Piglet. <laughs> and, and Haley Atwell's just like, what the fuck? What is happening here? Um. So other other likes for it. I think the movie's genuine. Mm-hmm. Uh. The problem with a lot of like live action Disney movies these days is they all want to try and be a little like subversive just to kind of put the internet nitpickers in their place. Well, give give an example really quick so people can get like, what you're talking. Uh, like Beauty and the Beast, you know. It I I mean I didn't see it, but just kind of like reading or listening to what the movie really is, the live action Beauty and the Beast, you know, it it feels like it's going out of its way to really just kind of like fill in like points that people pick apart over the years it's like oh like well just stuff that never needed to really be explained and make a lot more details where they're not needed and you know it's like ever since enchanted became so popular because enchanted was kind of the first disney movie to kind of poke fun at disney tropes yeah and so every disney movie has wanted to do that like maleficent like beauty and the beast and and so on. And I, I like this movie doesn't do that. It's just a genuine 
movie. Yeah, but I'm I'm trying to I'm trying to figure out like how it did it in Beauty and the Beast for you. So like l- so, like I said, it just tried to fill in a bunch of details or you know so called plot holes that never needed so, to be. So filled. basically, the things that you might not have liked is that LeFou was gay or that the. Uh, some of the townspeople in Bells just so happen to be black, or 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 no, that, not not that. I mean, well, to me, I'm not calling him that. People, that's a pro- I think that's a whole different issue. It's just more like, uh, oh, so what? your 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 thing might have been like the fact that they expanded on the lore of the beast. Yeah, it's just like it's kind of like overwriting things where they don't need to be overwritten, or you know, like why why is you know they feel the bizarre need to explain that not everything in the house is enchanted because bell talks to a hairbrush yeah and because she thinks the hairbrush would also be enchanted and alive and they just feel this need to over explain that well given the animated movie i mean you you trust that you know i'll, I'll at least give her give her that but i i see what you mean yeah uh see i i'm like at a love i'm at a i'm at a 50 50 with you because i actually like the expansion of the lore on the beast because um, like, I, I don't like the fact that somebody's cruel just because they're cruel. I, especially when we're supposed to get to know them and we're supposed to like them in the end, I want to be able to have a reason for why they're cruel. And I, I actually think that the live action Beauty and the Beast did a good job of explaining why the Beast was a spoiled, rotten brat. You know, aside from just saying he's a brat, deal with it. They actually tried to explain it. I, mm-hmm. I like that fact. Am I going to say that they did everything right? 50 50 uh i didn't think the the whole trip to paris was necessary so that bell could learn the origin uh, like bell could learn about her mom i I thought that was kind of unnecessary but i I see your point yeah and this this didn't necessarily try to do that it was you know as simplistic as a poo story can be yeah and for that i just admire it for being genuine and just kind of simple and honest it it doesn't need to be all like, hey, hey, we get it. Disney tropes, right? Mm-hmm. You know, it's just, yeah, it's a talking bear. See, see, another thing that we could have been worried about is like, you know, fart jokes are a thing in modern day movies. And we could have had like Winnie the Pooh and Tigger all farting and, and all that. And that and it wouldn't have fit. It wouldn't have made sense Yeah, for it. Um, but they also kind of didn't do some of the jokes that I think would have been way too cumbersome to do. Like we, we didn't have to have Pooh get stuck. We didn't have to have Pooh try to get into the honey tree with balloons, all right? We didn't have to have that happen because it didn't matter to this to this particular story. We didn't, we didn't need to see how high Tigger could bounce. We just needed to know that Tigger could bounce. Yeah. Kind of thing. And before people get jumped down my throat, yes, when you have Tigger, you have to have the damn song, okay? <laughs> you have to have it. I know that Eeyore made the joke of like, oh, he does it all the time. You know what, Eeyore? I'll bet he does. But <laughs> as a kid, so <laughs> one of the things one of the things you love singing is the Tigger song. So just just deal with it, okay, Eeyore? Uh, so uh, is that all the likes you have for it? Yeah, I'd say that's kind of sums up all my praise. You, you kind of hit a lot of the stuff for me. Like, I like the genuineness of this, but I, I especially like the atmosphere. Mm-hmm. Because like I said, like the the Hundred Acre Wood tends to shape around where Christopher Robin is in his life. I like that concept since to a lot of us, Christopher Robin's or the Hundred Acre Wood is an imaginative world created by Christopher Robin. Um, That's why Pooh can talk. That's why Piglet can talk is because they are his stuffed animals that that could talk to him. So a lot of a lot of the Hundred Acre Wood is a project of imagination. And as his imagination kind of tended to recede, then the gloominess kind of kicked in and it got foggy and it got dark. And then the, everybody was worried about heffalumps, you know, and I think that was a very genuine way to be able to go about it just as much as when uh, Christopher Robin tends to shed that and become the, the kid that he always was. Yeah. Um. So, yeah, I think atmosphere is everything in this film and it actually like, through Ewan, because Ewan has to be the focus of this film. Um, and I, th- I think he knew that. He, I think he knew that everything had to shape around how his character was interacting with people. And therefore, the, mu- the movie could then be shaped along with him. So I, I did like that. Uh, I love the cast and performance. Um, I will even give some cre- uh, credit to some of the side cast 
that I don't think got enough spotlight. I especially loved all of the underlings that worked under Christopher Robin. <laughs> I thought they were kind of funny. They were they were like his live action equivalent of the Hundred Acre Wood Gang, you know. <laughs> It's true, because uh, I, I can guarantee you that if you if you actually looked at some of those British uh, British workers, they're rabbit, they're owl, they're tigger, they're poo to him. So I like that, that, that we had that uh, you like your childhood never leaves you. You eventually find people who act like that, too. Uh, but yeah, those are pretty much the likes that I have uh, dislikes for this. Now, walking into this, I actually did mention that I, I read a lot of uh, or I read uh, up to five mainstream reviewers review of Christopher Robin, all of which were pretty low. And the main reason that they, that it was low was because all of them were saying it was depressing. I don't know what they're thinking. That doesn't sound right to me because it's like this movie's not depressing. It's not even sad. I mean, it's a little bit sad because there, there are moments where it is, you know, but... like when, when, when you and when uh, Christopher lashes out at Pooh, that's pretty sad. Yeah. Uh, you know, it, it has those moments, but it's not like an overall... Yeah, it's Very. not being depressing just to be depressing. It's 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 you know like when you, when Christopher hits his lowest lows, he then gets built up. Yeah, from that point on. I mean, and it has a very just nice, optimistic, upbeat end to it, mm-hmm. right? It's not like we have. It's not the we have to say goodbye now and wave off into the sunset. You know? No, they they basically kind of made it sound like maybe. <clears throat> I, I actually kind of like how it it got left open ended, like you know we didn't get you know we didn't see christopher robin get fired from his job but it's all too it is possible he could have quit yeah and it actually would have been fun see the the way that i kind of wanted it to end was that um this is this is going to sound mean but i almost wanted christopher to get fired from his job and here and before people jump down my throat here's why because I almost wanted a continuity answer to it, which is he looks at it like he's all disheveled and, and trying to figure out, like, how am I going to pay the rent? And then he looks down at his drawings and he's like, I know what I can do. And they basically make Christopher Robin in his own world, the narrator, uh, the, the actual person who wrote the book for Winnie the Pooh. I'm not saying that we discredit the actual author. But if you did that and as kind of him basically reliving his childhood by re by putting it to paper, that might've been an awesome way to do it. Yeah. That might've been nice. So th- that's kind of what I'm aiming for, but they kind of left it open-ended where, yeah, he might've gone back to his job and then like all, like every summer they came back or he could have quit that job and just said, you know what? I'll, I'll do this instead. I'll be an artist. I'll be, and the other thing too, I don't know if you noticed this. I like the fact they made his wife an artist, because she was doing like I don't know what it was. Yeah, she was doing like floral arrangements and. No, no, like was it floral arrangements? Well, it looked like she was doing um, not architectural drawings, but like uh, uh like uh animate like animated thing uh, pictures that you could put up on your wall, kind of thing. Do you know what I'm? Do you know what I'm talking about? Are you talking about like like she did illustrations or something like that? I did see her drawing like during the war when he was off fighting in the war and she was at home having to and she was some kind of artist. Uh, is that what you're talking about? Well, they yeah. So so that was the setting up point. But you'll remember the the night that he has to come home, uh, to to tell them that he can't go out for the weekend. She was drawing again. Oh, I miss that. Yeah, she she was drawing again, and that kind of lends to the depression that that Christopher is just missing what's going on around him. It would have been cool if like, um, you know, he, he just decided to write it and then, then his wife illustrated it. That might've actually been a really cool way to end things. Right. Yeah. Uh, and maybe even Madeline comes up with some new stories kind of deal. Uh, so other dislikes that we had for it. There's not too much I can find to really hate the movie on. (laughs) Yeah. It's just a nice, I don't know why, like I can't get why, like, to a lot of mainstream reviewers, this was a four or a five. That that was a lot of what I was seeing. The The highest I saw was like a six out of 10. And I just couldn't understand because yeah, there are slow points in this movie, but I mean, there are slow points in a Winnie the Pooh cartoon. So I'm not necessarily seeing where you're going with it. And all of, all of which kind of fuels the narrative of Christopher's living a very drab life. And 
and he lives in in what what it was it supposed to be 1940s london i think yeah like late 40s early 50s so at that point like yeah things are going to be dreary things are going to be and also christopher robin grew up he's not necessarily he's in a society that doesn't encourage imagination at that point yeah and that's all that like the, one of the things i liked at early on in the movie is like they make sure that people understand christopher Lob- robin likes to do nothing and now he's shoved into a world where he has to do something all the time yeah so that really kind of helped things out yeah i'm not really thinking about stuff that i genuinely disliked about it a lot of the the camera work and the art worked for this film um so I guess uh, unless you have another dislike, let's let's get to the final score here. What would you give Christopher Robin? It's been a long time since we've just had a kind of a really good family f- dramatic film. I don't think we've had one of these since like Finding Neverland, you know, one that's r- just really good for the whole family. So for that, I'm just going to give this movie a nine. Uh, for me, I'm going to I'm going to be a little disappointed to people and give it an eight. And the only reason I'm going to give it an eight is because a lot of the work I felt like was very solid B. (laughs) Again, people aren't going to like my reasoning for it. I was never entirely behind the new designs for all of the, the Pooh characters. I didn't like the fact that Pooh had a very, very hard to decipher mouth that kind of bothered me. I always liked the big open expressive Pooh bear that I, I grew up with. So I wasn't necessarily behind all of that. Uh, there were a couple of things that I felt could have, the narrative could have been better. I didn't like the fact that his boss, the only reason that his boss was the villain was because, well, he was basically loafing off of everybody else's hard work. You know, he was, he was the entitled bratty son of the, the founder of the company. Yeah. And I just, to me that, that is such, it's such a drawn out trope right now that I'm sick of it. (laughs) Um, and I almost wish like that, that that character not that the character didn't exist but that it didn't get as much screen time as it did uh because it was unnecessary um and i will also say one thing that people are probably going to disagree with. i wanted more time in the hundred acre wood i wanted that and i wanted my damn gopher <laughs> okay i wanted to talk about gravity and you know I, I wanted to have all of those really cool moments that we all enjoy about winnie the pooh granted now that i look on it you can't do much with screen time with that like what are you gonna do just sit there and play poo sticks all day it doesn't make it doesn't work but i still wanted more time in the hundred acre wood and i think you could have found a way to be able to do that uh and and still make it engaging for the kids so i'm gonna give it a b effort i think it is a solid b b plus effort um so eight eight and a half out of ten and as far as whether or not it's worth, uh, what it's worth, how would you recommend, how much money would you recommend somebody spend on seeing Christopher Robin? I think it's a really good movie, but I don't, uh, just movie ticket prices. I don't think it's necessarily something you need to take all your kids out to go see the movies to the theater with, you know, but it's a, I do, it is a solid family movie. And I mean, it's sad to say to stay away because I think this is a movie that deserves to do well financially. Yeah. But at the same time, it's just because tickets are so expensive and hard pressed. I know there were a few kids in our theaters and they sounded like they enjoyed it. So, yeah. you know, use your discretion about how much you're willing to spend. Either way, definitely see it with your family if you get. I think it also just depends on the age of the kid. Like, yeah. Younger kids are going to get a lot more enjoyment out of this. I think in our theater, we had a couple of teens that were giggling right along with, but that's probably because they, they grew up with it. But let's just say if your kid got grew up with, I don't know, Harry Potter, this might be a little boring to them because they're used to like magic happening on the screen constantly and having action and stuff like that. And that's not the purpose here. So I think at that point, if you have younger kids, it works. Uh, but really my recommendation is going to be go see it as adults. Um, it's built towards you guys. And then, kind of take that as a litmus test for your kids. If your kids are going to, if you enjoyed it as much and you think your kids are going to enjoy it, go back and and bring them to it and see what they think. Um, Maybe do that in the dollar theater and see what they think of it. Or, you know, wait until it hits uh, digital streaming or something like that. Uh, But I, I, I really do think adults who grew up with Pooh are going to get more out of this than necessarily kids. And at that point, they can make the assessment as to whether or not their kids 
are going to get anything out of it. Um, so yeah, there you go. And I think that's actually going to do it for this review of Christopher Robin. So it was, it was worth the trailer bait that we actually got to see this movie. Yeah. It was another good movie. Yeah. So, uh, unfortunately though, you guys are going to have to wait a little while as the next vlog that we have, uh, is all the way into, well, there is a limited screening that we might try to get into as long as it's nearby, but the next official Dragon Shadow vlog is going to be all the way in October as we take on Venom.